Folks! Hi. I think I missed I missed the usual cue when I talk, but you know what? Who gives a rat's behind? Because it's crazy week this week. That's right, folks. There is no Ian Gibson. He is far, far away. Hopefully jailed. We don't actually know. I am getting the GPS tracking signals, but they just blipping all over the map. But instead of Ian, it's a blessing in disguise. We've got two of Save Data's finest. Uh, well, not, I mean, we couldn't get the important ones, but we got these two. We've got Chris and Elise. How are both of you? <laughs> oh, I, I, as great as that opener was, I, uh, Definitely unmuted you, but if I, you were I, to I, repeat, I had a distinct feeling. If you were to repeat your entire opener, God. Well, folks, um, <laughs> as the uh, as the other bearded white man on this show, like a beard, whatever the fuck, with glasses, um, I'm gonna be playing Ian Gibson for this episode. <laughs> boo, boo, boo. I hate video games. Factorio's the best. See, ah, oh, that played so well that time. It was so natural. At least, do you have an Ian Gibson impression? <laughs> uh, I hate that game. I've never played it, but I hate it. <laughs> well, I don't know if you saw, but I clipped that and sent it in our Discord. And everyone was like, fucking hell, Ian. God. I can't. Genuinely said, I hate that game, comma. I've never played it. And then just continued with his <laughs> hatred. I was telling Zach, I think in that same thread, I would understand if he was like, oh, I hate Wind Waker because of the art style. I don't want to play Wind Waker because it's such a departure. But it is. But the Twilight Princess isn't that different from like Skyward Sword and Ocarina and all that. He's an insane person. <laughs> I understand his complaints. Oh, Twilight Princess is about... beautiful, but like it's not that bad. Yeah, I just he lives in a he lives in a safe world filled with Gundam and Richard Dean Anderson and Stargate, and he just doesn't want to leave it. And he never will. And, st and starting franchises <laughs> with the fifth game and then being confused about why he doesn't understand what's going on. Or the third game. Oh, God. Oh, Ian God. Gibson. Where, where, wherever he is, God bless when him. When you say the third game, I think you mean the twelfth game. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the third main line? And when I say Does the fifth, I sense? mean, like, the seventh. I um I know for a fact he'll listen to this because he listens to the ones he's not on because <laughs> he won't fall asleep listening to his own voice. Um, folks, it, it, it is too much. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> folks, <laughs> it's episode 30. First of all, I can't Hell believe yeah. that. Second of all, it's the 29th of July. Unlike around the monitor, which document says it's the 30th, which is Dude, simply don't get untrue. Me with Zach's madness about how he labels things. <laughs> Um, says the guy with multiple lists on his phone oh god i have so many lists that's why they almost cast me as uh never mind that's a that's a liam neeson skit where he You're says gonna make a, a he was, joke. it wasn't i was making i was not wasn't gonna make a schindler's list joke but there's that skit where he pretends he got the role because he likes making lists <laughs> forget <laughs> i forget what show it's from and then the, uh, the improvisational comedy <laughs> yeah bit? That he keeps trying to do improv really and he keeps making jokes about cancer and AIDS and they're like, dude, you you can't do that. And he's like, I'm Liam Neeson. It's funny. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Not to detract not from, <laughs> from the hilarity of Schindler's List. But uh, moving on, folks. Uh, <laughs> it's just local chat. This is what happens when Ian's not here to hold us down. Um, to bring to bring the room down uh we've got plenty to talk about this week all happy things because i refuse to talk about bad things i will mention them briefly but there will be no open discussion because my opinion is correct um first though oh, no. we've got to talk about the games we've been playing i'm just gonna run through mine real quick because there's a lot on this list and chris hasn't even filled it out that's how many games are on this list um i have been catching up i've been away since saturday I went to the great state of Vermont. Um, it was fun. Uh, my family land, has a land of Bernie Sanders. Land of Bernie Sanders. Yes, I was up there. We went to Burlington, stayed at a uh, cabin, all that sort of fun stuff. I got a lot of reading done, which was great. Uh, I had a great time, but and I bought a PS2 Slim, which was great. There was a 
uh, good like uh, little retro game store that did not have New York prices, and they also sold mm. Blu-rays, DVDs, and VHSs. And I was very tempted to buy some VHSs um, because I'm thinking of putting a TV with VHSs on it in the studio as like background. I think would be cool with that projector possibly uh, projected on the wall because they can't copyright strike a projector. Um, it's impossible. I looked it up. Um, gotta, so they're, they're, they're too slow. You gotta be fast. Yeah. So I've been clamoring to play some video games when I got back. Uh, I still going through Bioshock two. It is not as good as Bioshock one in design. Yeah. Um, what really pissed me off today is I realized you can't go backwards in Bioshock two, like you can in Bioshock one. Uh, so I missed a power to the people machine and I have no idea where it is or like, I know where it is cause I can look it up in the guide, but I can't ever go back and get it. And it's really annoying knowing that even though I'm like half a save away from it. Um, yeah, that really pissed me off, but, uh, it's, it's still more Bioshock. I, th I think the things they did with adding the big daddy weapons and all that sort of stuff is neat. Uh, it's a cool pers perspective. I just feel like they didn't, they only went halfway on it. I feel like I'm I'm the guy from the first game in a Big Daddy suit. I'm not a Big Daddy. 100%. Um, so I feel like they kind of like halfway on it. I do think they did enough with the story to make it interesting. I mean, it's 10 years later. Uh, there's new areas to explore. It's You're like finding out more about the people who built Rapture, and that's always neat. Um, so I'm definitely there for the hook, but... Uh, I think they could have done better. I'll have more thoughts when I finish it for the second time in my life uh, when I get there. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV, I played a bunch before I went away, and I have not touched it since I've been back. I'm not sure if I'm going to touch it again. Um, I don't know. It's not really calling me back as much as I thought it would. So, yeah. Chris, you're still playing, right? Yeah. I haven't played since y'all played. I mean, the thing is, like, I'm so far ahead. This is a disjoint there, where it's like when y'all stream again, I'll probably hop in. But mm -hmm. like, if 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 everyone else stops playing, I will not keep. I will not continue to play. Yeah, I keep forgetting that you uh, you uh, had played before, and at least you play too, right? Uh, yeah, I haven't played in like almost a year now, but I'm like level sixty something. I'm like almost done the Heavensward patches, so I'm almost mm -hmm. in Stormblood. But it's gotcha. just like that game is so so long. Yeah. And like the Heavensward patches is like halfway through the story. Like once I finish those, because there's still Stormblood and uh, Shadowbringers. Oh. And then please, Endwalker please. is coming out in like a couple of months. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not invested in the story whatsoever because I haven't been paying attention, which is 100% my fault, but also I don't care. It's an MMO. Um, they say Heaven's Word is where it gets good, and like it is good, but also rough. it's just still so long. Yeah, I it's just... It's still just like long and slow in that I kind of, even though I actually do like the Heaven's Word story, I think it was good. I'm still considering just skipping through every cutscene because I just want to like get through it, you know? Yeah, like when I play MMOs, I have a podcast on, I'm like yeah. half paying attention. <laughs> I mean, that's most, like I also play MMOs horribly uh, as Chris has learned. Like I just do crafting stuff and I walk around. Yeah, you're, I've you're, you're a fucking nightmare I've never person. done a raid or a dungeon. Um, I just, I, I find them so, I don't like combat. I mean, I don't mind it, but I just, you know, it's not, it's not for me, so. Uh, yeah, I'm going to probably do the first dungeon at some point. Um, but who knows if I'm going to boot it back up. I know Ian wants to do another stream, so I'll probably at least try to be there for that. Um, also, I bought both RimWorld uh, expansions last night. I had not, in my 100 hours so far, owned Roy Royalty expansion. I almost said Royality, which is our show. Uh, I had not owned the royalty expansion because people said it's not really worth it for the amount of content. Um, but then I, for some reason, bought it. But ideology <laughs> came out, uh, so you can add like your own quote-unquote ideologies, religions to the game before you start. Uh, so I started a quick faction where I did basically made 
uh, like an authoritarian regime where uh, cause I just tried to see how hard I could go in the, in the settings for it. So it's like, uh, we want to dominate other people because we're better than other people. And then, uh, I think I made us like pure humanists who like, don't want to, they don't want anything to do with technology on their bodies. Like we're all about the flesh and all that sort of stuff. And then men have to wear pants but I made it so women had to be full nude at all times and men God could have as many it, wives as they could have. And I tried to also mix in cannibalism, but there's certain ones that you can't like cross over with each other. But I'm not really sure when they go into effect because I did like the crash landed people. So uh, I know that like builds up over time. I, I don't know. Like I just wanted to push that to the limit to see where like that sort of starts making itself apparent because like when i landed it's not like the women went and took off their clothes all the way i think you like build up to like the different parts of your religion or ideology as you're going through does it does it let you set like a dominant cast yeah so you you, like could you could you have made a male dominated religion yeah so you can have like belief levels and then you can you can definitely make uh there's one that's like men are more respected in this religion women are more respected in this religion Um, oh man we're gonna get so many think piece articles on the (laughs) fucking washington post about this goddamn thing it's it's really cool i'm really happy they added this because people have been doing this for years like making their own uh like cannibal societies and all that sort of stuff so it's cool that you can implement it in a gameplay wise not just your head cannon um Mm. so if you want to go make a bunch of cannibalistic pirates you can do that uh and all that stuff the only thing i've seen people complain about is they kind of wish you could build up to it. So, like, uh, slowly add things as you're playing through the game, not at the beginning That's of the game. That's how I assumed it, it would be. No, from what I can tell, you, you're just, like, at one point, you're just into it. Uh, you're not, like, it's not, like, slowly adding to religion, like, in Civ or something like that. Uh, they did just patch in, you can save your, like, uh, uh, different ideologies so you can use them in different games and all that sort of you stuff. Can save your religion's preferences. Yeah, so we'll see how my hot author, author, authoritarian, 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 uh, uh, <laughs> naked female warriors do, um, with no armor. So that should be fun. Um, and I also added uh, cannibals to my world because you can like specifically add them now. So we'll see how that plays out. I'll, I'll probably put a couple hours into that game, see if it it's really going the way I want. Because the other thing, I caught myself doing like. I was making ideology of how I normally play RimWorld, and that's the other reason I was like, no, I want to push this to the limit and kind of get out of my comfort zone. So once I do that for a bit, I'm just going to go back and do my, like, peaceful sheep herders, and uh, we just trade and make statues all the time. You heard it here first. Will normally plays RimWorld by making everyone get naked. (laughs) Uh, I love, (laughs) just love naked, tiny pixel people. Um, and finally, I've been playing Last Stop. Uh, this was on Game Pass. I just want to look up who made it. I believe it's like an indie game. Um, here's the Steam for it. Uh, it is by, uh, sorry, Variable State, published by Annapurna. It's, it's fun. It's almost like a Telltale game. So the, like, main screen for it is a subway Uh, in london so the tube and it's got three different people and you like choose them and and it's chapter one for each person so you go through chapter one then after that it's chapter two for each person but you can you can switch between them you don't have to do it in the same order uh and it's sort of like this interconnected stories like you see the other characters in the background of some of the other people's stories um and none of them have cross met yet where i am i think i just did chapter three or two um it seems to be somewhat of a supernatural stories intertwined with each other again i'm not far enough in to uh know that much about the story uh gameplay is pretty self-explanatory you're walking around in the scenes you're answering dialogue in a timed amount of time uh picking your choices i don't know how much those have effect a lot of times i pick a choice and i seem like you would say that thing regardless of what i picked like it's just Mm. vague enough um david cage nods wistfully in the distance (laughs) yeah the um the 
animations are a little rough. I, I don't know how indie the studio is, but a lot of them are like snapping uh, to made things. One game before this one. Yeah, so I, I give it a lot of leeway on that. It's not distracting in any means, but you definitely notice it. Um, and also, the other thing that bugs me is you're like walking forward with the stick, and then when a scene changes, it locks that stick to the direction you're walking in. And then as soon as you move the stick, it recenters itself. So your character will shoot back the other way. And there's like, and they're That's trying to make weird. it cinematic. So as you're walking, the camera's like pulling out, but you're just oh, like fury. Your, your character's getting smaller. So you're like trying to make them run in a straight line, but they're just like awkwardly running. Um, I it's like, so the, it's just like fury. <laughs> yeah. The, the intent is there. I like it. And but I think the solution is just have me hold forward to make the character walk forward on a track. Yeah. Like don't have me directionalize them because it, it ends up dist distracting from the cinematic quality because my character is being a doofus and like walking into things. So and spinning. Yeah. So it, it, it's really interesting. Also it's the classic is on games, game pass, GameStop. It's on game pass. So definitely go check it out. Um, so it's basically free. Yeah. Basically free. <laughs> um, I also downloaded Ra Raji. I don't remember the, I, I should, write things down before i talk on a podcast uh there were a couple other games that came out there was the ascent also came out uh people were saying that was uh pretty good uh, as well raji and ancient epic yes i downloaded that as well i have not touched it uh, uh and then... all i know about that game is that it is fucking gorgeous oh sweet i i know literally nothing about it uh and then there was flight simulator i was thinking about downloading onto the xbox series x well, um, now, but uh, I don't know. I, I just want to see it on there. Uh, you can't go that deep. You'll never come back. Yeah, that's true. They like I think there's like a snow plane now that would like no, skis. We lost, folks. We lost them. And you like uh, a, a Phil, Phil, uh, Phil Harmonic Orchestra. Phil, Phil Spectre. Spencer was uh, <laughs> tweeting about landing like near Everest with it. And I was like, oh, you bastard. I want to do that um so yeah that's basically all i've been playing not much else um at least that i don't think there were some roguelites i was downloading there's the seven the seven day roguelike like winners came out and they were uh there were some people posting them so i was looking at them there was a cute one about defending a farm so i think i'm gonna check that out uh there was also like a heroes of might and magic clone of one so check that out too um but for now, uh, we shall move on to Elise. Elise, what have you been playing? Install Rashi and Ancient Epic right now, because this game looks great. <laughs> um, it's I've been very playing, pretty. I've, I've, I've played a lot of different things in the past like week and a bit. Uh, I'll just breeze by a few of them, because I didn't put a whole lot of time into them. Tales of Berseria. Um, I've been told that it is that Scarlet Nexus, which I'll talk about uh, in a bit, in a second, is a lot like Tales. Uh, Tales of Berseria might be a great game. The PC port is whack. Uh, I've had <laughs> issues with um, it's like if I put like move the right stick to the right, the camera will go right and down. Or vice versa, it'll mm. go like left and up if I put it to the up. So I had to Ooh. completely remap my controls manually to fix that. Um, I had the game revert to like PS1 graphics, like fucking RuneScape graphics <laughs> for a little while. To the same thing we um, I said in the uh, Discord. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I had issues with like the audio just not existing. I, I have to like not have my headphones plugged into my computer at all while I'm playing this game for audio to exist. Um, weird. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, and the, the final nail in the coffin that I could never fix. And also I just like all those things kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. And I wasn't actually enjoying the combat that much uh, was that it registers a, a left stick press as both the right and left stick. It registers the right, or not stick, uh, trigger. It registers 
it has a right trigger press first and then has a left trigger press, which what? means I can't do any of the left trigger press things uh, because it'll do the right trigger things first. Is your controller I don't haunted? know why. It's it's because it's like... <laughs> it's Well, the reason is that because it reads them as one axis and, and there seems to be no way to fix that. Seeing as this is a um, Tales game, I'm choosing to blame David. <laughs> He's somehow involved. <laughs> he wrote so, the code. So I wanted to like it, but uh, the PC port is too whack. Damn. Um, Death Store. I played a bit of that. It's fine. Uh, I wasn't feeling it as much as some people are. Uh, the combat is really bare bones, and it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. It feels pretty good to play. Um, <laughs> the the fast paced like of the game plus the isometric on a control stick, just the motion of like spinning around and doing all those things kind of hurt my my wrist, like my thumb. Mm. Oh. Uh, kind of like strained it after like maybe half an hour, which wasn't great. Um, and also just like, I, I just wasn't that into it. I don't know if any of y'all have played it much. It looks like something I'd be very into, but I have not uh, even touched it a little bit. So Yeah, I, yeah. I watched Vinny from Next Lander play it a bit, and I was like, uh, I, it, it, A, it looks like Tunic, which I played that demo and I wasn't that into it. I, I don't know. It's just, it did not the the only thing that really intrigued me was the bureaucratic uh death like stuff which mm-hmm. always gets me that's why i like controls so. the, the story like is is pretty good so far the the like environments are a lot of fun mm-hmm. uh i like a lot of the characters like there's a lot of good stuff there it, it just didn't like grab me yeah as much as i was hoping um moving on from that i played the first like two battles of the fire emblem three houses dlc um, been meaning to play that for a while. The second battle. Okay. <laughs> you start, it's like this symmetrical four-sided arena, right? Uh, there's like, pe- you start out, there's people in the middle of the arena, there's people on the side. You kill them. As soon as you kill the last person, more people pour in from the top right corner. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, okay. Some reinforcements. I thought I was done, but okay. As soon <laughs> as you kill the last one of them, people pour in from the the top left. You're like, oh, oh, come on. Like, <laughs> you're going to do this to me twice. You kill them. You kill the last one of them. People pour in from the bottom left. I'm like, okay, oh. fuck you. <laughs> like, don't blue ball me like that. Don't like, <laughs> don't make me think I'm done three times in a row just to add more. And then finally, the nail in the coffin, one of my characters died, Claude died, on what what was probably going to be the last turn. Uh, And I had no Divine Pulses left, and I'm like, okay, fuck this. I'm going to not play this for a couple days because I don't want to do this like hour and a half long battle again that I wasn't enjoying in the first place that much. (laughs) I, I, I feel like... I prefer when games do reinforcements when you're like 80% done with a if wave. If it was like, yeah. Not yes. when you finish like, yeah, a wave and does. then, or at least have a counter of waves. But yeah, especially like having you think you're almost done. Because there were there are times there when you're doing that, you could have used an item you thought, oh, just the last guy, I'm going to use this item, and then mm-hmm. reinforcements show up. So that's... That's like yeah, and it's like I thought it was done, so I like did my last healing. I didn't care about positioning because I thought it was the last guy, and then yeah. people pour in, and I'm like, okay, I'm not ready for another fight. Yeah, that's right. crazy. Yeah, and I've heard the the later battles in the DLC are better. It's just the first like two that are kind of rough. Uh, but I don't want to do that battle again right now. <laughs> <laughs> do you permanently lose characters if they die? Um, you can turn that off and on, but I have it on. Oh, okay. You can, like, play casual mode, but it's, like, a setting you need to do at the beginning of the 
of the game. I've never played a Fire Emblem. Most so people would tell you you're playing know. it wrong if you turn off the permadeath. Yeah. Well, I I turned off suck. permadeath. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> the thing is, you you play differently if you don't have permadeath. Yeah. It's not just that it's more yeah, forgiving, but it's that you can play the game in a different way where you can just sacrifice people. You can just like, whereas it's a lot more fun when you have to like actually have people survive and like all your units are precious it also just means ah, when, it, when it, yeah. it doesn't go well i guess yeah. that's true i i do prefer that because like xcom i i like having my unique people that i try to save um and all that sort of stuff yeah so that makes sense yeah. you, you the, are, the strategy is much more interesting the strategy is much more interesting when you need everyone to survive mm -hmm. yeah so um, finished up Mass Effect. Mass Effect 3 is better than 2. Uh, <laughs> Mass Effect 3 is the best one. It That's plays great. better. The story is actually pretty good. Um, it's not quite as good as Mass Effect 2, but, like, it's close enough. Mm -hmm. uh, the gameplay is way better. The DLCs for that game are great. Uh, like, they're, they're just a lot of fun. Um, the Mass Effect is already barely an RPG. They do limit your your like uh, dialogue choices. You used to have three, now you have two, mm. um, oh, wow. which is rough. I don't like that, but it it's not a big enough deal that it makes the rest of the game like that much worse. Yeah, I should go yeah. play three yeah. now. You should go play three. You should also play two. Two is still fantastic. Yeah, I played two. I played one and two. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. played the opening of two like 30 times. Um, the ending of three is still not fantastic, but it's so not I've only played the original ending. Before. I've never played the patched ending. Is the, pa the patch ending is still that bad? Okay, I believe in the patch, what they added was like an extended cut of the ending where you've got like more happening afterwards which is mm. which is nice and there's like voiceover and like you see you see what the crew is up to afterwards and all that uh, but it's it's not fantastic but it's you know it's not that bad and it's only yeah. like the last 15 minutes at the end of a 40 hour game so yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think it mostly gets flack because of the director saying we're not just going to have a one, two, three choice ending. And then they literally did mm -hmm. that. Uh, that's yeah. their own fault. Yeah. Um, and I think it also like, like, look, it's no fucking Fallout 3 uh, regular ending. Like, it's not that fucking bad. I mean, that yeah. ending was good. It was just the fact that you couldn't play afterward. Right, was, well, also that there, like, there were big plot holes around it, mostly around like Fox literally says, no, I'm not going to go in. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have a reason. I'm just... Oh. I, 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 the, the writers didn't think of anything, so I'm just... I can't. You gotta yeah. go. I... God, I adore Fallout 3. That's a separate thing. Oh, I do too. I just think the ending is dumb, where yeah. it's like, you have ghouls and robots and Fox who can all easily go in yeah. there, no problem. And they're all like, mm, yeah, but... Also, would clean water <laughs> really improve anything? I mean, the, the uh, DLC kind yeah. of... Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm kidding. Uh and uh, <laughs> Flint like Michigan. the ending is is it's not fantastic, but it's not enough to make the rest of the game like bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Uh also plays Vanguard. Vanguard is by far the most fun. <laughs> Was it you that posted that thing in the around in the uh, same day Discord really? Forty percent of people play as soldier. What yeah. the fuck is wrong with yep. you? That, that, that's like that's like if you if you signed up to be an Avenger and you're like, yeah, but can I be like Hawkeye? Like I don't I don't want like okay. powers. I don't want to be like I don't want to like Hawkeye you know, is great. I okay, comics, comics Hawkeye, Hawkeye is, is great. fantastic. Yes, yeah, but I'm talking Mash. about Jeremy Renner shitty movie Hawkeye. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Yes. But it, it's yeah. it's 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 walking up to the superhero counter and saying, "I'll take gun, please." As opposed to like, I'll take f flying and lasers and being a god and like, no, I'll take just gun yeah. is cool for me. I like to take a cab everywhere. <laughs> I need to start running again. I'll just run. Yeah. 
It's oh, like you damn. could you could be throwing like fireballs and like magic powers that make people fly into the fucking stratosphere, but no, instead you just get a couple guns. I'll settle for the power of gun, yeah. <laughs> just like I think Joker. I'm just gonna punch people. Yeah. That'd be great. Alright, and then the, the two games I've been playing the most lately. Um, either of y'all played much Pokemon Unite? No, I didn't touch it. I, I had a, you know, it's weird, because I love a MOBA, and I love Pokemon. <laughs> saw the game, saw it, and I was like, this looks good. What's the fucking catch? And then, like, as soon yeah, as I was... There was a catch! I was, as soon as I was, like, ready for the catch, I was like, because, you know, it took a day. It took a, and, like, it, I didn't download day one. Day two, everyone was like, it's evil! Ah! And I was like, ah, <laughs> there's the microtransactions. There's, in the most literal sense, pay to win. That doesn't affect anything. Look, pay to win's bad, obviously. But it doesn't yeah. affect things at the base level. However, it does affect things at the competitive level. And there are very few games that are competitive style games that I'm not going to want to play competitively. Like if I, if I boot up, if I play Valorant, I'm not going to be like, uh, I'm just going to play this casually. It is a game designed to be played competitively. I'm going to fucking play competitively. That's just, yeah. that's just how things work. Like if I want, if I want a game that isn't competitive, I'll play a, like a cooperative game or a single player game. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as soon as I saw that, like basically you can pay money, pay real money to make your items better. <laughs> I was just like, okay, I'm very good on never touching this, actually. Also, the yeah. balance sounds like it's an, an existential nightmare. Just give them money, Chris. And it's Come on. it's <laughs> such a shame. It's it such a shame. shame because the game's great. Like, other than that, I really enjoy it. It looked, it looked just... pretty fun. Um, yeah. I... I really like that it's 10-minute matches. It's that a match I like that a like, you can jump in. It's like... In League, you know you're dead usually within the first five minutes, and then you've got 40 minutes left. In uh, Pokemon Unite, if you know you've lost seven minutes in, you've only got three minutes. Might as well make the most of it. Yeah. Maybe you'll get Zapdos and get everyone to dunk 100 points, which, you know, the Bounces system that the game Zapdos, isn't really but... over because the, that that rebound period where when Zapdos yeah. appears is a really cool. There's a lot of great ideas here. It's a shame that it's a pay to win nightmare. Yeah, and yeah. and I really like the. I mean, I like Pokemon, so obviously mm -hmm. that's a big thing. Hell, uh, yeah. I get to play as Garchomp. <laughs> uh, I like I like that it's simple. Uh, it means I can focus on like strategy and target acquisition and and prioritization and like all that stuff instead of like getting the exact creep score and the perfect fucking uh builds and having to do like my 12 hit combo in the middle of a team fight where there's 12 people doing the same thing or 10 people doing the same thing mm -hmm. and me instantly dying you know yeah it, it lets me actually play the game instead of playing the it meta. lets me play against the, the people instead of the game. Yeah, you know I mean? as someone who has never played a MOBA and doesn't want to play a MOBA and also doesn't like Pokemon, this is still probably the first one I would try. Because it looks yeah. that accessible and people are talking about it that well. And it's like, they, they did like post uh, like a, a survey of like mm. asking for feedback. And who knows how what's going to come of that. There is a possibility. I'm not going to say it's a good possibility, but there's a possibility that they make the game better, that they remove the pay to win and whatever. May probably not, but we'll see. <laughs> but maybe. But maybe. So you're telling me there's a and chance. And if that happens, yeah. I want to see what this game is like five months down the road, six months down the road. Yeah. If it's still got an active player base, if it's if it's fixed some of its issues, because otherwise what I'm thinking is, what other game is there for me? I'm not going to go back to League of Legends. That's too much. And you shouldn't. Heroes of the Storm is a Blizzard, which we're not touching right yeah. now. Like, I'm not going to play a Blizzard game. Uh, and B is game. like dead. <laughs> uh, Dota, fuck that. It's it's got all the same issues as League, but more. 
Yes. Um, and I'm like, I want to play like a, a game like this that doesn't have all these, these issues. Yeah. But I, I don't know that that game exists. Yeah. Someday. Someday. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, do you want to hit us with this last one here? Uh, yeah, let's hit it with Scarlet Nexus. This game's fantastic. Okay, this I want to talk about so this good. fucking game. What the fuck is Scarlet Nexus? <laughs> Scarlet is a cover. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh. And a fever. The closest like, genre comparison I can make is Nier Automata. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, you, you, you have my attention. Please do, do, do go on. Uh, it is a... I'm not going to say it's a JRPG, but it's close. It's like JRPG adjacent. Um, you've got your like skill tree, but mainly it's like a character action game with a lot of cutscene. <laughs> the story is bonkers. Uh, I'm I'm, this. I, I was invested in the story, <laughs> but it's, it's bonkers. Um, the combat is, so you can choose between one of two protagonists at the start <clears throat> who have like different perspectives on the story, but it's the same story. Um, okay. I would highly recommend you choose Kasane first. I feel like she gets a, a more full understanding of the story, and also uh, so the combat is you've got your combos, uh, which are just like, you start with a three-hit combo, you can make that four on Kasane and up to five on Yuito. Um, uh, and then you've got, for one, telekinesis, psychokinesis, which is you can hold the left, tr the right trigger to pick up an object and throw it. <laughs> and there's always like a bunch of objects just scattered around every area. Mm -hmm. So you can just pick it up and throw it. And if you do that after a hit, then you do like a big throw, where you pull it behind you and throw it. And then. Uh, and there's some objects that you hold the left trigger and it's like special throws where it's like maybe it splits in two and then you push the triggers towards each other so that they slam into each other. Or like maybe it's like a statue that you hit them and then you just slam it down on them a couple times. So there's Jeez. a lot going on um, combat wise. Not a vandalism. There's a lot going on. And then on top of that, you've got teammates. Um, for most of the game, you have four teammates. You can have two of them with you, like attacking, um, but but four in your party, and you can borrow their powers. Um, oh, that's cool. So oh. you can. Sorry, this is the game David the told us right... about. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I started it. playing because David said it was his game of the year. Uh, oh wow! So far. I didn't know and that. I'm like, oh, I bought it. Yeah. Is yeah. this by the uh, the Code Vein team? Mm. No, because it sure fucking looks like it. But is. it is Bandai Namco. It does. Wow, it wow. does look like it is. Um, it is Bandai Namco. It's. I don't think it's the Code Vein team, but it's like they definitely worked close together. Right, mm -hmm. right. I mean, I, I didn't think they had the turnaround um, time because Code Vein came out in like 2019 or whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah. Um, so to to borrow the power, it's like you you press the right bumper and then one of the face buttons, and it's like you can. <clears throat> For example, one of your guys has electrokinesis as his power, which will add lightning to all your attacks uh, oh. or to all your throws. Or you can borrow invisibility, which makes you invisible, and you can either uh, like charge up an attack that does big crush damage or uh, do like crits for a little while. I do love doing big damage. You can borrow... Uh, Hypervelocity, which basically slows everything down for a while. Uh, you can borrow... Uh, what's the other one that Kasane has? It's... Uh, fuck. Um, well, <laughs> it's anyway, fuck. you can, you can borrow all fuck. these powers, and at a... The power of fuck. At a certain point, you can also, like, combine them, so you can, say, get the electrokinesis and combine that with the hypervelocity, which means that you're applying the status, the electrostatus, like 12 times as fast, which means that it it like combines because you're applying it faster. You can make them uh, like get electrified by that status and get like knocked down for a while. 
mm-hmm. or you can uh, like I, I, turn thought, invisible. I, I thought you said you can bake them instead of make them and i thought you were gonna say there's a cooking like <laughs> fundamental combat mechanic and i was going to lose my fucking mind yeah that'd be pretty great you can't there is no combat or no cooking mechanic damn it damn um, fishing and the combat is just, it's just so well done. There, and on top of that, there's like, you can also call them in uh, to do like special attacks for you. That's like visions. Uh, and and also a couple other things too. And it all combines into like a really, really tight combat system. And then on top of that, uh, the game's structured into, into phases. So there's 12 phases. And between each one, you've got a standby phase. Uh, where you, where you can just like go talk to your people, go do like persona style like bond episodes, which is right. basically like your confidants so your uh, your 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 time to uh, make friends and romance. Yeah, uh, there's no romance, but yes. Damn, lame, lame. Um, this and it's it's not as like structured as that. You can like give gifts and you can, but the bond episodes are like specifically timed it's not like once you hit a certain rank with them it's like once you finish this chapter these people will want to talk to you interesting Uh, gotcha and and as you but as you uh upgrade their bond level their powers their their power border will get stronger so like maybe you'll get more time or maybe you'll get uh an extra attack an extra special attack um in your when you're using the electrokinesis or whatever um and the characters are all a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a lot of cutscene. Is there it as it horny is. as it looks? <laughs> no, no, it's it's barely it's horny more. at all. Oh wow! Yes. Yeah, it's like, which is nice because they do yeah. the thing <laughs> where it's like everyone is on uh, anti-aging drugs. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Like, Japan. Really oh. Bad. No. They do some. They do some interesting things in the story with it, and also it's not horny at all. See, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with to like, me. It's near near automata having incredibly horny character design, which really never factors into the <laughs> plot. I mean, it yes. like it does a little bit, but like I not really. My plot. Not shut up. Like um, I'm fine with that, but don't combine that cool. with making your ch- characters. Yeah. On growth stunting hormones from the moment yeah, they're scared. That's, yeah. that's fucked. <laughs> hey, hey, don't hey, do that. Namco? You can have one or the other. <laughs> yeah. You, can, as a, you can do one or the other. As a, as a long <laughs> time... In, incredibly ugly children you get to play as. Yeah. As a as a long time lover and player of JRPGs, uh, this sounds sounds right up my alley. Yeah, that's um, just not right. Actually, it's between fun. you and David both talking about it, uh, I think I definitely want to check it out because it I sounds pretty fun. Um, yeah. Sweet. I'm, David uh, pitched it as similar to a Tales game. After trying a Tales game, <laughs> like I see the similarity, but also it it feels very different. Yeah. It. It does not. It feels much less JRPG. It feels much like, even though they are very similar, it feels like it's not a JRPG. It mm-hmm. feels like it's a character action game. It feels like it's you know. That sort of like style blending is really in vogue right now, and in a, in a good way too, because like I'm yeah. totally down for that. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're not like doing it terribly and then copying each other. They're actually like innovating. Mm-hmm. I think that's neat. Like, um, if would you call Nier Automata a JRPG? No, I'd no. call it a fucking game of the century. Yeah, 1800s. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I, I definitely want to check that out now. Um, <clears throat> sweet. Uh, Chris, I know you mentioned uh, you don't oh, play don't video games you. anymore. I, so. Mine's, mine's going to be super quick because we're going to do the same thing we did last week, but this time we'll see if anybody has any input on the same games as last week. Uh, <laughs> I am always, uh, am currently, will always be playing runescape um it's it's up on my monitor right now see it in your glasses (laughs) he always can um it's a fantastic fucking game uh wood cutting please what are you taking me for Uh, i have things to do um (laughs) now runescape is a fucking great game uh and i i don't give a shit who 
fucking has opinions about it. If your opinion is anything but it's a good game, it's an incorrect opinion. And I'm sorry about that. It's a good uh, game. This game fucking rules. And it I, I I the more the more I play, especially on my Iron Man account, the more I'm just like, nah, this game fucking rules. If only we knew how good it was. If only there was some sort of uh, way to figure that out. <laughs> hey, quit ruining my potential bits. Um <laughs> Yeah, RuneScape's great. Uh, anyone got any <laughs> questions, comments, concerns, or prayer requests about RuneScape? Uh, I just updated. I think I played on RuneScape Steam. very briefly around ten years ago. Mm -hmm. I and I totally understand like, that like, it's version. an ugly as fuck game. Um, although I I think that that's actually not that true anymore because they a lot of the new areas actually look really nice and like they've started leaned into that runescape art style which like there is an art style there even if you don't want to if you want to ask yeah. it's not i i think i said this i don't know where i said it, it might have been on this podcast people that still hate runescape are just afraid of change yeah I, like, I and also, when you say you're talking about runescape are you, you're talking about old school runescape i right? personally play old school runescape however the account i'm per currently playing on so they if you make an if you if you buy membership which costs like seven bucks a week or, mm -hmm. or a month, whatever the fuck. It's a month. I don't know why I said a week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a lot. Yeah, jeez. Um, <laughs> uh, fucking, when you make an account, it is it is on both. It is on old school and RuneScape 3. Mm -hmm. So like when you have membership, you have membership for both, um, which is a cool system. Um, I started playing 3. 3 is good. However, old school, old school just has something about it, man. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's got some like weird fucking magic that makes me just really good. really need it um yeah uh playing old school old school's fantastic not, i um, recommend not sorry not to interrupt or go back to uh, a well but at, right now you talking about that i would probably rather go play runescape than 14 I, final fantasy the thing 14, about yeah. runescape and why i think i love it so goddamn much especially right now is that like i can actively play it when i have time to actively play the game like i sit down and do quests or do like a tick intensive uh, slayer task or something like that. Um, and when I don't want to fucking uh, do that shit, I can just be like working. I, I can be editing for work and also cut fishing or chopping trees or mining or whatever the fuck. Yeah. I'm getting stuff done in at two places at once. You get the serotonin uh, and like, it's stuff that like also it pays off for your, your long-term progression because then you go back and you do other stuff and you're like, ah, because I spent that time grinding out shit earlier, I get to just do the cool shit now. Yeah, Great. I agree. I've seen you do it firsthand. You're very good at multitasking <laughs> with RuneScape. <laughs> I'm, I've been fired from that company. Who gives a shit? Uh, <laughs> By a very famous baseball player. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> That's true. I forgot about that. Um, and the other video game I have been playing is Guilty Gear Strive, the punchy punch game. You punch people. Uh oh well we didn't talk about I, I can't believe I didn't mention this on the fucking podcast last week I mentioned how they just added the Secretary of Defense to the game <gasps> who fights who fights with an alien inside a coffin uh from Area Fifty One an alien also named Area Fifty One don't worry about it. um that character's name young young Will Crosby is Gold Lewis Dickinson Gold Lewis Dickinson Gold Gold Lewis one word Dickinson last name what. Wait, I'm sorry. I <clears throat> sometimes I go on the internet when they allow me to. Uh mm -hmm. 50 should. feet from all schools. Uh oh, and gosh. when I do that, I think about you. And sometimes things pop up on my computer that confuse me, Chris, and I realize I have to ask you about them, which is okay. I saw a picture of a large man with a coffin and it said mm -hmm. mayor of flavor town and he was dressed up as guy fieri and is that from guilty gear okay everything but guy fieri is from guilty gear no but he was guy it was guy <laughs> fieri no i think that was um i if i were to guess that is either a meme by guy fieri himself because his twitter account this is not a fucking joke posts video game guy fieri memes all the fucking time they they made a fan like uh Guy Fieri Fortnite skin. What? And it was posted to the Guy Fieri account. This is a real fucking like they do this on the frequent. I don't fucking understand it. <laughs> I hate um, that. It's bizarre. But uh no, the oh, that's one thing I I'm glad you mentioned because so the mod community for Guilty Gear on PC is fucking amazing. 
Um, there's stuff from like all the menus uh, are changed to have like Teletubbies on them. Uh, all the music is swapped for like Persona music or Skulls music, whatever. Um, every time Potemkin does anything, instead of the normal sound effect, it plays the sound effect of Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> uh, that mod pack's amazing. Uh, every like every, the load screen is like an eagle flying around a thing. Uh, there have there are swaps for that where the eagle is replaced by uh, Thomas the Tank Engine and it's playing that like uh, trap Thomas the Tank Engine meme song from forever ago. Uh, yeah, no, the meme community is great. So I would not be surprised if someone had very quickly modded uh, Gold Lewis Dickinson to look like uh, Mayor of Flavor Town Guy Fieri. Okay, good. I sent you a picture. Um, it just confused me and it made my body feel weird things. So That's, I just that wanted is, to that is precisely what this is i just wanted to check in with you as my gaming God, parent the, fucking, the flames on the shirt are so good <laughs> it's a very good picture uh folks i googled guilty gear guy fieri and it was the first image so do what you will with that knowledge <clears throat> um i love it i love that the sign says please vote for guy fieri <laughs> like he's up for re-election guys come on yeah he's gonna keep the keep the taxpayers happy Good old Guy Fieri. Um, great. I'm glad you were enjoying games that came out uh, recently and forever ago. And in um, 2007. Uh, that's incredible. Um, it's we've been talking for two. It's 9:51. We're, we're just we're just gonna do the uh, the list now, right? Uh, oh, I, I, we got to touch on some news, um, okay. folks, and that means we get to play the news oh, theme. Of Legally, have <clears throat> legally required uh, due to the union laws uh, to play this news theme. So uh, here we go. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? Uh, I don't know if you guys know this about the man who wrote that song, but Harry Knuckles. <laughs> Should I, think of something, <laughs> should I think of something innocuous? So if that actually means Some... something, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it does somewhere. I was going to say hairy toes, but then I thought that was too gross. So I went with knuckles. Toes are gross. All feet? Gross. Toes are gross. Okay, so no, no, I'll go with it then. That the man wrote that song, Very Hairy Toes. Um, oh. Has to shave them every day or else they grow back. Um, God, that's disgusting. Um, folks, it's news. Uh, I just want to touch on this quickly. It's de <laughs> Developing stuff from Activision, which isn't funny, uh, is the uh, there was a planned walkout on Wednesday due to all of the investigation stuff. I believe that went very well. A lot of people participated. Good on them uh, for doing that. Uh, I'm happy that... Uh, the people who work there aren't happy with what happened. Uh, that is great. Um, also, uh, there were a couple open letters from the CEO and all that sort of stuff. They were not great. Um, also trying to shift blame and all that sort of stuff. And then uh, there was all the stuff that surfaced about the infamous suite that they used to go to. Uh, I'm not going to name it and give the person it's named after any sort of credit. Um, mm -hmm. But that stuff came out. It was kind of horrible. Go look it up. Read all about it. Uh, try to keep this podcast on a happy note. Uh, these sort of things do happen, so I just want to make you aware of them. If you listen to this and no other news, uh, which is probably a mistake, to be honest. Um, Around the Monitor uh, also did a great coverage of this, so definitely go check that out. For people who are better at talking about this stuff. Uh, I just want to mention it briefly. Moving on, folks. Um, not a ton of news this week. Um, Everything got got a little overshadowed, huh? Yeah. By the, uh, by the lawsuit. Yeah. So I'm kind of just going to yeah. do the quick hits here. And you guys chime in if you uh, yeah. want to talk about anything. Um, Sony clarified with the Nix's acquisition we talked about a few weeks ago. Is that how you say it? Is it Nix's? I have no idea. I'm just reading it. I thought it was Nix S. It might be Nix S. Um, Nicholas S. Yes. Uh, Nix S would be pretty good. Because uh, Nix's has a bad connotation of like you yeah, nix something. Yeah. You, you killed um, yeah. I'll say Nixess. 
uh, acquisition, they are, which it was weird that they clarified this because the rumors were they were helping with porting games to PC and then Sony clarified that they are helping do that. Believe the hype, motherfuckers. <laughs> it's like, it was the weirdest rumor clarification because they were, it wasn't like they were clarifying a rumor. They were just saying the rumor was true. Which I guess is the essence of clarifying a rumor, but most of the time they're changing what it is. Yes. Um, I think that's cool. I think more games should come to PC. Everyone should ha have access to all games at all times, <laughs> including classics such as Horizon Zero Dawn and Days Gone. Um, uh, don't compare those two. Come on. <laughs> they both suck. Um, the Order 1880, whatever the fuck. Yeah, Naughty Dog and <laughs> excuse me, Naughty Dog and Infinity War veterans, and I believe a couple Bungie veterans, uh, started a new studio uh, called That's No Moon. Um, Great name, terrible. Logo. Yeah, I. Great name. It must be a copyright nightmare. I don't. I, I think because I saw people saying that about the copyright nightmare. I don't. It's not that famous of a quote. I, mean, I think it it's is, fine, but. As a string of words, I don't think I think it's it's very fair use. Um, it'd be different if their logo was like a Death Star. Um, David did point out that it's an SEO nightmare. That's what I was gonna say. Is an term. SEO nightmare. It's uh, uh, Jeff Gersman did a couple tweets where he was like, uh, "Throw me the idol, I throw you the whip." Games, and then just like other famous <laughs> movie quotes. <laughs> That's really good. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, That's No Moon is <laughs> we're gonna We're gonna need a bigger boat games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, take the gun, leave the cannoli games. Uh, I think <laughs> That's No Moon is the farthest... Like, if someone asked me my opinion on it, I would say that is as far as I would go for quoting something. Like, it wouldn't do any longer than that, and I wouldn't do any more specific Three words than that. is rough. Just it's realized what their logo reminds me of. Because it, it looked very familiar. It's like basically three M's that are like different levels, mm -hmm. like different proportions in a circle. It is uh, very similar to the Sky UI, which is the Skyrim UI mod, uh, mod curation manager logo. Oh. It is that. that yeah, I, as soon, I, I see it as soon as you say it. Yeah. I gotta look this. Well, can someone post it in the chat so I can see it? I'm Please. trying to find like a, an image of it. It uh, reminded it me of reminded... a different. Go ahead. You go, great. No, you go. You go. I was gonna say it reminded uh, of a logo that Will and I know very well of a certain uh, production company. Oh, <laughs> that's what it looks like. It looked, dude. It looks so much like that. I was racking my brain of where I knew that logo from. It looks almost exactly like it. Really identical. <laughs> That's insane. Um, wow. Here it is. Um, <clears throat> while I wait to see this, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm posting it. Okay, I think that's a. Oh yeah, I can see that. This is folks for audio listeners and videos. This is me reacting. Wow. There you go. Some blue steel for you. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, honestly, I think it's cool that people are starting studios. So, yeah, it's always gonna be a good thing. Yeah, make games. Games are great. Keep doing it. We love you. Um, also, there was a bunch of Annapurna news today too. Uh, they had was, a big uh, like announcement stream of stuff. Yeah. So Outer Wilds DLC coming in September. Excited about that. Honestly, they started playing a few bars of the song, yeah. and I was like, oh, yeah. I didn't watch it. Was oh, it the banjo song? Yeah, I love the yeah, banjo song. It sure was. So good. I need to get that vinyl. I think I, I missed it the last time I yeah. it was up. Um, <coughs> man, I don't know why I'm coughing so much. Um, Xbox uh, Series XS and the PS5, despite Chris not getting either of them, <laughs> are the fastest selling consoles, respectively, of their of their. I will uh, say, like... Xbox is essentially easier to get. I've actually had it in my cart a couple times and decided not to get it because I want the PS5 more. Yeah, I um I can't. My PS5 is a Blu-ray player now, 
uh, because its disk drive is way quieter than the Series X's disk drive. Um, really? But now that I say That's that... an interesting problem. Now that I say that, the last time I watched a movie on the Xbox Series X, which was like a week and a half ago, I didn't hear it at all. So I wonder if it was just like the drive when it was new had to be like, I don't know, broken in. But when I first got that Series X, that drive was super loud and I switched to just using the PS5. But now that I'm thinking about it, I did just watch a movie on it and it didn't make it anyway. But um, I haven't played anything on my PS5 in a bit. I was just waiting for that Death Stranding director's cut, you know? <laughs> gotta, gotta save myself for that. You and no one else. <laughs> Me and Hideo Kojima... <laughs> who buys it <laughs> and, himself because he doesn't get a copy and, and Mads Mikkelsen <laughs> and Mads Mikkelsen god I love both of them um I know you do honey oh god I can't wait I have the two books I have they're over there Death Stranding books I think I'm saving them for extra life I, I think spin of the wheel gotta read a page out loud so that'll be a nightmare um and finally, uh, live action Pokemon series in the works at Netflix. I don't care, but Pokemon people like, so. I'm, I'm, people are like worried about this. I think this is going to be a blast. <laughs> if it's cheesy yeah. enough, I'll watch I, it. Exactly. Detective Pikachu was okay. It was a yeah, fine it was movie. fine. I think it did cool things it with was, Pokemon. It was enjoyable. It was, it was yeah. a good look at like life, real life with Pokemon. You know, like how yeah. people would function, and I and I find that cool, despite Ryan Reynolds so, being a Pikachu. If if we get more like that, I'm fine, fine with it. Sure. Also, the super creepy mm. Mr. Mime. Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> that was the creepiest scene. Also, Chris, I lost your camera. I don't know why. Oh, okay. No, you're back now. But now I got a copy. I'm back now. Copy and put it. Over. Oh, come on! Get this website. Yeah, you know, OBS did the same thing to us at the beginning of our stream. Oh, everyone, calm down. We're okay. Um, we put down the various knives. Wait, you now you've reconnected. Discard these changes. Okay, OBS I hate. Ninja, hello, I hate everything. Um, folks, that was the news. Sorry, I, sorry, I breezed through it, but it's really nothing incredible this week. Yeah. Um, What's up, news? Not much is the answer. <laughs> uh, which means it's time to pick some games for the subtextual writing system. Um, folks, you know it, you love it. It's the system that can't be beat. Um, call your local garage manager to get your copy. Um, we what? are going to add three games to this. Um, it's going to go smoothly and great. I already know what game no Chris Ian is going to add. Um, <laughs> Fuck you. you know so I'm going to go first because I'm the most important. And the game I am putting up for submission, folks, is the lovely, the incredible turning point fall of liberty why what? because we need more bad games on this list chris i recently rewatched the video <laughs> you put out of us playing that game uh because it came into my like home page on youtube and i was like fuck yeah why not uh that fucking game rules <laughs> i i thought of for extra life this year of trying to speed run that game we should do it wouldn't that be good I think it's that fucking part on the goddamn uh, bridge, <laughs> oh, though, and it's gonna be a with nightmare. With the Panzer Shreks. Oh, that was. Yeah. God, I can't believe we beat that game. That game's great. Oh, um, it's not great <laughs> in terms of this no, list. No, no, no. It's uh, not. It is. God, it so, is like, just. What? Like, better than Kerbal? <laughs> Yeah, I don't even want to explain it, folks. Just go watch the video of us playing yeah. it. There Take are... the extra work, Subpixel, folks, to put that yeah. in the fucking description of this video. Yeah, everything good about this I, game. I'm watching a gameplay video right now. <laughs> you are, are you that? watching? Are you watching Will and I's gameplay video? Yeah, because you need to go no, watch that. Just some random one. Um, oh, that's, that's understandable. The only redeeming that that game isn't good the time you have playing that game is good yes uh the guy with the chair hitting the 
in the Nazis. Oh my god, the, the, the president does a run in. Or the time I did like a, did I edit? I think I did two. I think there's two videos. I don't think the second one ever came out. Oh, I should finish that because I Please did do. that whole bit where I ran through all those enemies and it was like an action movie. It was pretty good. Um, anyways, this game is terrible. Uh, how terrible is it? I think it is better than Watch Dogs Legions, but worse than Donkey Kong 64. I think it is better than DayZ. Oh, I was trying. I, Ooh. you know, I would agree with that. I was if, just trying if, to. If video games kind of are a metric of how much I enjoy my time playing, <laughs> I definitely enjoyed playing Turning Point Fall Liberty more than I enjoyed Daisy. <laughs> um okay uh, at least unless you have uh hard opinions no, on this i don't have um, any i have no opinions on this i've never heard of this game until you, you want to show up to def show up and defend mario party 9 uh <laughs> new number no. 36 on the oh. new number 36 on the list turning point fall of liberty um uh, a game i was very much looking forward to before it came out and uh no longer is the case uh chris would you like to go next um no at least go next <laughs> all right the game i'm bringing is uh mentioned it earlier in the show skyrim comma oh modded yeah yeah i've got I mean, oh no, no, <laughs> skyrim i understand <laughs> oh i spell because you Mods are just part of the game now. 100%. So listen. Is Skyrim a good game? Yes. Is Skyrim a good game? No. <laughs> there is so much to love about Skyrim. And I keep coming back to it. I've played the game like through like as much content as exists or at least most of it like seven or eight different times now the stories are pretty all right the combat is bad the world is amazing i love the other scrolls world it's bonkers and batshit and like when you get into like the the deep lore it's completely like inscrutable um but I adore it. But also, Skyrim is so buggy. It is... The, <laughs> the combat is basically non-existent. You, you swing the sword until the people die. Or yeah, if you play bad. magic, like... Magic can be fun if you add, like, 12 months to it. Which I did. Which I did. And, and I had a great time as a mage, right? I, I had a bunch of new spells. I had, like, a mod that lets my... MP regenerate at like a reasonable rate instead of like when you start playing the game and you try to do magic, you need to throw out flames for five seconds and then wait 20 seconds to do another attack. Uh, so, but with all these mods, you get a whole bunch more fantastic fan made content. You mm -hmm. get fixes to the vampire system, to magic, to combat to whatever you want to the story and it turns skyrim to the story and it turns skyrim into being a very high potential but very flawed game into removing most of those flaws and adding some more <laughs> like adding adding more like to, to the pot actually with like the unofficial patches and everything, Crash is less than vanilla. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Which Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Bethesda never claimed to make games without Crash, because all those times the Todd Howard claimed it. <laughs> um, so I would put the game Yeah, go. Yeah. Uh I God, say, I hate this list so fucking above, much. <laughs> it's it's so hard because it's like I, there, I think I'm gonna put it above Firewatch. Between Firewatch and Oh Firewatch. my god. 
Oh, or, I don't know. fucking hell. I cannot believe Which, Firewatch is number 13. And I love Firewatch. In a good way or a bad way? In a bad way. I can't believe it's that high. And I, I fucking love Firewatch. But I, I love Firewatch too, but that it is I can't believe Outer Wilds is that low, you bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You wow. absolute Wow. Outer Wild exactly. one tier above Firewatch is fucking insanity. That's oh, untenable. Well, at least one and untenable. two are correct. <laughs> that's number two. Um, oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so zero. I I don't know if I would put it that high. I do like Skyrim. I don't know if this is the point Ian's screaming at the radio in his car, but could be. Um, <laughs> I hope it is. Uh, yeah, part of me wants to just put it at number one. <laughs> really piss him off. Is he in the chat? I realize I haven't monitoring chat at all. He, uh, at where, when we started, he wrote, Where's the funny guy? And I'm not sure who he was referring to, but we're all right here. Right fucking here. Yeah, so. It's my whole um, shtick. Um, <laughs> I would put it. I would put it at eighteen. I'd put it above Mass Effect two. I would put it twenty three. What? Because I can't live in a world where <laughs> Skyrim is better than Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> because. <laughs> Okay, Shadow of the Colossus is way too low. That's the thing. Chris, like that, also, that's, that's that's where I'm stuck. Is what Chris, I'm you can like, use your remember. you can use your instead of pitching a game, you can re put Shadow of the Colossus somewhere else. That's tempting, and we'll we'll, we'll return to that. Okay. Um, but also, I think Prey 2017 is a better game than Skyrim. Oh, do I though? Fuck shit. <laughs> I wasn't a huge fan of Prey 2017, despite I like it. My, my thing is, I definitely think Mass Effect 2, MGS5, and Cuphead are all better than Skyrim. So you want to put it at 23. 23. I would like to bump Star Wars Battlefront down and, yeah. Put it there. Well, yeah. The compromise here between all three of us is like 17. Above Kerbal Space. Program. Better than Massive. Uh, sorry, better than Metal Gear Solid Five. Skyrim. I can yes, put it above. I don't like Metal Gear Solid Five. I well, think Metal Gear Solid Five's controls are awful, and I could not Skyrim's get past controls like, are awful. five hours in that. Skyrim's controls are functional. No, the controls in Metal Gear Solid Five, the Phantom Pain, are perfect. First of all, second of all, perfect. Third of all, I think. I think I would put this at 20, above Cuphead, below MGS5. I'll settle for that, I guess. One day we'll move Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> you can move it right after this. Do I want to burn it on that? It be above, above Metal Gear Solid 5. <sighs> I don't know. I think it's two against one. I don't. I mean, Chris, unless you would give it up above that, but I don't. I, don't I the I... the highest I will put it is the highest I can agree to is twenty. If you if if Will, you got you got to make the decision here. I mean, it's got to go at twenty. It's two against one. Okay. And um, you know the rules, and so do I. Richard Astley. <laughs> what commitments? What I'm thinking of. <laughs> what? He won't answer my emails anymore. Um, speaking of Jesus, speaking of Jesus, uh, speaking of Jesus, Chris, yes, you know, uh, speaking of Jesus, vaguely appropriate for the game, about to nominate Passion of the Christ, the video will, game. <laughs> will, what game am I about to nominate? Speaking of Jesus, is it RuneScape? You absolute fool, no, it's near Automata. <laughs> oh, great, that's right, <laughs> you've been baited into a trap. At least New number 47. <laughs> <laughs> I have played it. Yeah, I was gonna say at least at least I know Elise has played it, and I I'm pretty sure Elise likes it. So I've, I've I've trapped you, you absolute fool. You thought it was gonna be RuneScape the whole time. I've played Near Automata. You played Near Automata? 
Yeah. You say automata or automata? I used to say automata, and then I started saying automata, and now I can't stop. I say I say automata. I just say it. I say things, Chris, and I get in trouble for most of them. (laughs) I've seen that too. Um, you're dumb. Oh, sorry. Let me just fix that. Yeah, get them. Take that. I I gotta look that up. How to spell it? I think it's N I E R. No, it's like the weird N E I R. It's the weird capitalization. I just want to make sure. I get it. Oh, Anyways, picture yes. case. Uh, this game fucking rules. Uh, the soundtrack kicks absolute ass. The, ca- the gameplay is amazing. It, this game, I I saw a trailer for something recently uh, that had it and it made me think of how good the system is where it'll flow from a shmup to a character action game to a different ki- kind of shmup to a like quasi platformer. All in like the span of like five minutes, so fucking seamlessly, and like if nothing else, that deserves co- like, commendation and praise in a game because that is that is astonishing. This game fucking rules. Yeah, I um <clears throat> I didn't finish it or I finished it. I didn't do all the endings. I think I did up to B or C, mm-hmm. which I know there are big ones after that. But I thought as far e as the- is the final like canon one, like the other ones are all jokes um and e e i mean like ending e is one of the most it is it is a moment simply unlike any other in video games because i don't think anyone says yoko Terra was quite insane enough just to, to think of that as like a let's do that with my with the end of my game but god I should, so fucking good. i should go watch those or try to pick that game back up you but, uh, you would freak out for ending e that's that's really? some will crosby bullshit maybe i'll do that uh, i i really enjoyed where the story was going and like what was happening in it because it was just like vague and weird enough and like not guessable enough but like you felt like you were figuring it out along with them like just yeah. a step ahead so i i really enjoyed all that stuff um I think the combat was really good. I I liked having that robot guy to shoot stuff with. Um, I think I really figured out a good style in that game. Um, so yeah, definitely fantastic game. Where would where would you put it on the list? Uh... And at least if you have any thoughts on the game as well. Yeah, at least if you got any thoughts, old, once Chris places it on the list. Oh, okay, <laughs> like, that's where uh, I would say this is the fifth best game. The fifth best game. Yes. Yeah, I can't agree with you on that. Here's the thing: is Breath of the Wild has no fucking right being where it is, and I and I've I've a lost cause on that. I understand, and I like it almost as much as I like Kingdom Hearts too. Okay, so Nier Automata has fantastic story, like the. The whole plot with like to be a nine s and and all that, so good. It and like you said, it does flow seamlessly between being like a shmup and a character action game and a side scrolling platformer and whatever. Mm-hmm. It doesn't do any of those things particularly well in the gameplay aspect. Interesting. And especially the combat, especially like the character action combat. This is a platinum game, and it really doesn't hold up to to their like standards it's not bad like it's it's playable it's just not engaging it's it's near automata it's playable (laughs) this is right on the box there's i feel like there's no like there's there's nothing to do in the combat right you've got like two combos that is true the the combo system is quite limited yeah now that you and, it. and then you just hold the, the left trigger to shoot. And that's about it. Maybe this game is Whereas, bad. like, if you compare this to, oh. to Bayonetta, it has, like, a bunch of combos. It's got, like, your your whole deal with, like, dodging and witch time and mm-hmm. and your your guns and chaining those together and all that. Neo Automata doesn't have any of that. But I think it makes up for that with how fucking dope its uh, story is and a lot of like the cool world building stuff they do and the soundtrack and how, how unique a lot of the good. encounters are. All the endings are, all the like playthroughs are, quote unquote playthroughs are different. They're not actually playthroughs except for playing through as 9S after just playing through as 2B is like, you, you 
you're playing the same story again, which is, I know I just talked about how much I love Scarlet Nexus, but Scarlet Nexus <laughs> is a blast to fight. That's the main reason I played that game again. A lot of people have that Not complaint to get about the, the, uh, different... the switching to the 9S and having the hack. I actually didn't mind it, um, but I understand that I'm in the minority on, on that uh, yeah. Case. So I actually I, never, I actually never got through ending E. I think I made it. I think I made uh, it. I did ending D. At least I, I was the last thing I remember. It's been a couple of years since I played, but the last thing I remember is I was like the tower thing had landed, mm -hmm. and I don't think I ever got into it. Uh, but I was playing that's, as as that's the, a shame. There's an exceptionally cool boss fight at the end of that one. A two. I think I did that. Um, I will say there is a boss but, fight. But I have seen, game. I have seen like what the ending is. The ending E is is fantastic. It's not fifth best game of all time. It's not above Titanfall two. I will say that the thing, ugh, I think it is above Titanfall two. Um, but I also think Titanfall two might be a little high, and I fucking love that game. It's not above Factorio. Um, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Everything is above Factorio. Uh, that game. You've is never insane. played Factorio. I hacked up like fucking a hundred hours in Factorio. <laughs> will I know? I'm just kidding. It's a great um, game that's amazing. It is. That's it's true. Almost perfect. <laughs> I hate you so much. Um, that's fine. I, 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 I'm willing to go lower, but I'm just saying that I think it's very high. Uh, I do not agree with that thing that we, we roasted that poll on fucking, uh, I don't know if it was Famitsu or whatever the fuck it was, where like Japan rated the best game of all time and Nier Automata was like number fucking two or three. Jeez. Fucking buck so I, I'm Quest, not a huge so. fan of numbers six through nine, Factorio, Doom, Animal Crossing, or Half Life. I love Knights Half, of the Old Republic. Half Life. I get being that high because of like historical importance. Not, Kotor's great. Um, yeah, Animal Crossing and, and Factorio being up there is fucking madness. I'm just gonna ignore Excuse Outer me. Wilds on this list because it deserves number one. Oh, hey, it had it long enough. Um, I. But saying that, actually, I just I might go for like six, honestly. For for an year. Saying all that I said, saying how much I love fucking Skyrim and and uh, Outer Wilds, but I'm ignoring that that exists. Six. Yeah, that's I, the problem with this fucking list is that, like you can't fix it because like it's so fucking borked. It's a it's so perfect borked. list. Um, it's just wait until not. we figure it all out. <laughs> it's gonna be a nightmare. Um, I you people are insane. First of all, and what do that's I mean, true. you people? I mean you two. Um, <laughs> no, that's that's fair. God, I would put this trash heap of a game. Actually, no, I genuinely enjoyed my time with Nier Automata. Uh, I, I do want to say one thing about it real fast before you make your decision. Um, I don't know if... It, it, did you do the boss fight where you fight one of your teammates, William? Where I fight one of my teammates? Not your, okay, when you're... Uh, not, did you do 9S versus A2? Maybe? Uh, so, if you, if you play that fight as 9S... Uh, and you don't ever attack A2, you only hack her, uh, you have to repeatedly do it, but you go through the menus and you find System 32 in her folder structure and you destroy it. <laughs> I, I gotta boot that game up to see how far I got. I really don't remember, but that's incredible. I, also, I lost my save, so I can't, like, I need to go through that game again if I want to finish it. So. Yeah. Um, I would put this, I would put this at 13, new number 13. Better than Firewatch, worse than Outer Wild. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a very fair, uh, it's a very fair argument. How about we meet and we put it at new number nine or new number 10? I'm fine with either of those. Let's put it at new number 10. Okay. So, uh, uh, new number nine. No, number nine. <laughs> so above better than Half Life, Life definitely. It is I better. Mean, honestly, oh, much better than Half Life. I don't like Half Life that much. I fucking love Half Life. I will say However, a, a lot I of this list. Game. 
a lot of this list is is just like a lot of our stuff was we put innovation of a genre over perfection of a genre yeah i mean i mean half-life is yeah. one of the most important games ever so but like, it, that, that's understandable it's the reason like animal crossing is so high because it like innovated yeah. a completely new genre same with like doom and all that sort of stuff i mean i say that versus yakuza zero which is a perfect game but uh um, but also is not great <laughs> when you play it now yeah it's fun. okay uh, so uh i have put this at new number nine god that feels dirty at least ian won't be as mad this time but maybe he will maybe he'll call me and say ah, trump was you gotta change the list it wasn't I mean, canon what? yeah <laughs> stolen election for half-life we've all heard his we've all heard his <laughs> Should I play replicant? uh no i have not played replicant yeah, uh, I, have, I think no, only I don't know has. and that's a bridge too far uh folks a bridge over the river Kawhi. <laughs> bridge over the river zach uh here let me read uh, am i gonna read through this list it's so many games it's, uh, okay i do want to say when you did it last time it was an audio nightmare yeah um i'm just gonna say new top 10 new number nine near automata new number 21 the elder scrolls 5 skyrim modded uh, I would say unmodded and modded. I would still put it there. Uh, and then new number 38, Turning Point Fall of Liberty, which has now awakened in me that I need to finish the other uh, video for <laughs> that. Do. And I'm totally going to do that. Um, folks, that's going to do it. I'm going to play the music once I get FUBAR up. Guys, we did it. We made it. We made it through. We we took the podcast by the throat and we threw him on the mat and then we punched him in the face and the ref said stop and you said no and then they died because they're dead now. We have conquered what we have been playing this week. We have destroyed the news and we have defeated the subpixel rating system. Folks, if you want to see more of our hot, hot content, you can go to subpixelfilms.com or your local dairy farm. You'll find it there as well. Uh, joining me today was the one and only Chris and Elise from Save Data. You can find all of their hot, hot content uh, youtube.com slash save data team and uh also on all their socials and all that sort of stuff uh you can also find me pissing on the grave of ronald reagan and you can find me kissing jimmy carter full on the mouth um on his, on his peanut farm <laughs> yes on his peanut farm peanut farm uh folks thank you so much for tuning in you can also go to anchor.fm slash local chat if you want to support us and send us money there's a subscriber thing on there both of you thank you so much for coming on this week i'm sorry ian wasn't here uh, i'm also happy uh but i'm glad you two could hop in and and uh, we will see you all next week. Bye. <laughs>